I was setting up for what I thought was going to be a big freight train out of Tampa on Friday morning. When I first heard a lot of sirens, then I turned around to see this to my north. Something was burning. A lot of something was burning. When I drove up for a closer look, I saw it was the old Likes Pasco orange juice plant, now home to several businesses and warehouse space. Fire crews were giving it everything they had, but the flames weren't responding. Turns out this was magnesium burning, almost impossible to extinguish. The CSX S-Line passes right through the plant, and the fire and smoke were enough to force a shutdown of the line until it was under control, and that wouldn't be for some time. Fortunately, earlier that morning I'd caught word of an ethanol train coming south, so I set up at South End Lacoochee siding and waited for him. CSX TK42313 South End 3360, clear North End Lacoochee out. It's Q423. Ethanol loads for Tampa's Hooker's Point Terminal from Bensonville, Illinois, off the Canadian National. CSA TK 42313, South Engine 3360, clear south end of Lacoochee, south end. 423 is a hot rail fan catch this morning with a CSX ET44AH leading a Union Pacific SD70M and a BNSF C44 9W. They're pulling a string of Trinity-built crude oil tank cars. But instead of oil, they're carrying ethanol for blending with gasoline at Tampa's big Hooker's Point fuel terminal. If this train had been 30 minutes later, that Dade City fire would have stopped him right here, or maybe in the Dade City siding. There's no way a dispatcher would have let a trainload of ethanol pass that close to a fire. The hoppers on either end of the train are called spacer cars to give the engine crew a little separation from 31,000 gallons of corn alcohol in case the worst should happen. Yes, yeah, thanks, TK423. 13 south, it's 3360 cleared. This is Dade City out. I had started out this morning exploring the Brooksville sub, about 15 miles north and west of here, looking for track gangs replacing rail. Instead, I found this, just north of downtown Brooksville. A train with two six-axle engines and a cut of covered hopper sitting silent in front of a diamond. I never knew this existed, but it's actually a loop track into Simex's giant mine and cement plant. If CSX is a shipper here, it appears they take a backseat to trucks. The half hour I was here, I must have seen 25 loaded trucks leave this place. The diamond was what caught my attention, clearly a 132-pound structure, but not new. The approach rail was stamped Lackawanna 1954. Plus, reducer bars on all four sides brought the rail going away from the diamond from 132 to 90 pound iron. Crazy. The Brooksville sub is CSX's X seaboard line from Brooksville to Tampa. This track once went all the way north of Brooksville into Dunellen, Gainesville, and into the Seaboard Main Line at Waldo. In fact, the turnout and part of the track of this backdoor Tampa route are still in place at Waldo. Not the original equipment, of course, but in generally the same place. If you subscribe to my YouTube channel, and if not, please do, then you know I love old tracks and historic places. I recently came across this sad, neglected relic of a once super busy passenger route into sunny St. Petersburg, Florida. This is the end of track on the Clearwater Sub, a route blended from the SAL Tampa Northern Line to Brooksville and the Atlantic Coastline ARE route out of Trilby through Tarpon Springs, Dunedin, and Clearwater down to here in St. Pete. The track actually extends another mile almost to Tropicana Field. But someone deemed that this was far enough for service, had a track crew cut an impassable derail, and so this is where the line that carried the West Coast champion and Floridian now ends up. In Plant City, I caught a loaded rail train ready to drop its cargo along the S-Line between Zephyr Hills and Wildwood. As it pulled out of the Plant City yard, I could see the engineering marvel that is continuous welded rail. Much more expensive than 39-foot jointed or stick rail, welded rail or so-called ribbon rail pays for itself in lower maintenance costs, both of the track and train running gear. 
This train is carrying 40 pieces of 136 pound rail, each 1,440 feet long. That'll make about five and a half miles of track. The rail is threaded through machinery on the rear end of the train, which pulls it out of the stack and rolls it gently to the ground, two rails at a time, on either side of the existing track. Track gangs will later come in and install it, maybe a week from now, maybe three months from now. Till then, the new rail will lay in the ballast, and that includes road crossings. A trench will be cut in the asphalt and the rail buried in it to let traffic pass over. You don't cut a piece of welded rail for a road crossing. Wooden tie maintenance is a never-ending thing. A few are replaced every year on busy lines. Here on the ex-Atlantic coastline, High Springs, Maine, at Vitus, Florida, new ties have been dropped on either side of the track in 12 or 13-piece bundles. CSX tries to do its heavy maintenance on southern lines in the winter and on northern lines in the summer, making it easier on track teams that have to work in weather no matter what. 4.218 The S-Line had been shut down most of the afternoon account that fire at Dade City, but just after 4 p.m. the dispatcher reopened it and here came Q442 out of Tampa, more than six hours late. 4.218 clear, north end, nice north minute, 5.44. 42, look good all the way, Mark 80 yards at all. Often a good shot because of shadows from trees, today the bridge at Blackwater Creek was in perfect light. I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button below if you like this video. And I'll see you next time out here on the high iron. On the CSXS line at milepost S814.2, this is Danny Harmon, out.